welcome to The List. I'm Jesse Combs. And I'm Patrick McIntyre. And together, we're checking items off the ultimate automotive bucket list. From things everyone should do... To things few have ever done before. This week, we go to Italy to visit the birthplace of Ferrari and make two iconic stops in the brand new FF. Then we attempt to blend in with the locals as we drive in Rome, trying our best to navigate the ancient and chaotic streets. But first... We're headed to Sant'Agata Bolognese to drive a Lamborghini. We get behind the wheel of the frighteningly fast Aventador. Check it out. I've had a love affair with cars my whole life. I build them in my shop, and I race them both on and off-road. I've spent years on the auto show circuit talking about cars, but now it's time to get behind the wheel and find the next adventure. Together, we're setting out to tackle all things that every car enthusiast should do. This is The List. Gentlemen, take your partners for the waltz. Okay. Today, we're in Sant'Agana Bolognese, home of the Lamborghini factory, where over the past 50 years, some of the most outrageous supercars have been born. And today, we're here to drive the latest in a line of raging bulls as we check Drive a Lamborghini off our list. The Lamborghini Aventador is a super stealthy, super fast supercar. It has incredible numbers for horsepower, torque, and acceleration. The Aventador commands attention, as it does respect. It looks like it would be more at home on the track, if not pulling maneuvers in the sky. The Aventador has all the sex appeal you'd expect from an exotic Italian sports car. And this Lamborghini has the updated technology you'll need to keep a previously raw and sometimes frightening driving experience to a pure, unadulterated thrill. <laughs> the lower part of my guts. Yeah, wow, first of all, bit. violent. Much more violent than I thought it would be. Can you feel my pulse? Let me see. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, thing, it shifts like crazy it's soft. It's so hard. I think I should have worn more protective underwear. Oh my god. All right, bring it, guys. Here we go. Uh, I'm just, gonna leave it in auto. You're gonna leave it in automatic? Yeah, let's, let's see, see what, what it does. It does. God, keep it straight. I am, I'm trying. <laughs> it just wants to go. I mean, I, I wasn't doing anything but holding the wheel and the butt just wants to just take off. <laughs> this thing is 100% just pure, raw power. I, I don't think this is a luxury car whatsoever. I think this is just insanity. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> like, I'm very much okay. I love your hair looks like you've been like... <laughs> like I just had sex, because that's what I feel like has happened. Okay, <laughs> one more time and then we're done. Driven 440 miles an hour. There's nothing that compares to this. Really? <laughs> These people are starting to gather. Yeah. 
Grazie. Una gran macchina questa, eh. I wish I spoke. Oh, it's a be beautiful machine. Mm. Bella macchina. Bella macchina. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> They love it. I would be proud of this. I would be very proud of this. The world knows Sintagata because of this. Just around the factory, the streets are narrow and dense. So we're looking to get to the countryside where we can drive this car on open winding roads. It is so beautiful it out here. It is gorgeous here. I would love to enjoy the countryside, but I am so focused on making sure this beast continues in a straight line. Well, I'll be happy to switch with you. Oh, I, sure, I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. I just wait. had to get that out of my no, system. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> now get it out of your system. <laughs> Thank you, sport mode. Thank you, sport mode. It was late in the year, and with shorter days, we only had a little bit of light left when we hit the hills. But we weren't going to waste a single second of it. Holy narrow roads. Holy narrow is right. The narrow roads, small villages, and rolling green hills were a great backdrop for an incredible drive. I love how this car makes me feel. I have a completely newfound appreciation for cars. All over again? You're falling in love all over again, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I really am. Okay, bring it. Bring it back. I don't know what else to say other than I thought I knew what love was until today. The car speaks for itself, and we are out of daylight. So with that, we can officially check driver Lamborghini off the list. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. You want to drive? Yes, I do. <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back with more from the list. Autoblog, the ultimate automotive resource. From the latest vehicle reviews, shopping advice, and ownership tips, to helpful apps, community forums, and photo sharing. Autoblog, where you can research, shop, and share everything on wheels. Today, we're on the winding roads outside of Marinello in the ultimate Italian car. The Ferrari has always had a magnetic grip on the world, whether you're a racing fan, a design buff, a car nut, or just a dreamer. Everybody should have the opportunity to drive a Ferrari at least once in their life. And we figured, what better place for us to do it than the very place they're born. So come along with us as we check, visit the birthplace of Ferrari off our list. we're driving today is the latest in a long line of outstanding models, but with one fundamental difference. It's got four-wheel drive, and it's got four seats, similar to the 612 Sky Yeti, but with much more room and some decent trunk space as well. Now, if you wanted to drive a Ferrari on the track, you'd want something more along the lines of a 458, or a La Ferrari would be even better. But for a spirited drive through the countryside with a couple suitcases in tow, the FF is absolutely perfect for us. Our first stop today is the Ferrari Museum in Marinello. It's the Italian mecca for prancing horse fans. It has exhibits showcasing Ferrari's racing history, F1 simulators, and even a look into the future. I'm excited to check it out. A visit to Museo Ferrari in Marinello is a full immersion into Ferrari's history, culture, and allure. We come all the way to Italy to celebrate Ferrari, and here they are celebrating California. Hollywood has long been obsessed with the power and elegance of Ferrari. And when the company expanded from a race program to private sales, Southern California was at the vanguard of consumer demand. In fact, Southern California is still Ferrari's biggest market. 
on display here showcase some of the finest design in the automotive world. And educational displays demonstrate how Ferrari's technology migrates from race cars to the streets. The racing history behind Ferrari explains everything. When you start off as a race team, you have that speed, that efficiency, that organization, that planning ahead, that teamwork, that, that cleanliness. Everything is absolutely precise. We even have the FF on display. Kind of proves that we really are driving a piece of art. So now that we have a background on the history of the brand, we're going to pay homage to the man with the vision behind it all. We're headed to Casa de Enzo in Modena. There, we'll get a glimpse into the life of a man that created one of the most iconic and aspirational sports cars ever to hit the streets. The Museo Enzo Ferrari in Modena features an immersive biographical film which tells Enzo Ferrari's incredible life story. The museum is built adjacent to the house where Enzo was born and the workshop where his father worked. Originally a pilot for Alfa Romeo, Enzo Ferrari worked his way up to become the manager of the race team. Rumor has it is that he wanted to get fired so he could build his own cars under his own name. Five years after that firing, he was legally allowed to use his name again, and this is the result. The Ferrari 125S, the very first car built in Marinello with the Ferrari brand. Ferrari is somewhat a status symbol. It's a sign of good taste, a sign of quality, a sign of I've made something of myself and my car is here to prove it to you. Who work hard are happy to show off what they have, especially when it's red and has 660 horsepower. <laughs> Driving around Marinello and Modena was fun, but we really wanted to stretch this car's legs. In order to put the FF's power and handling to work, we had to head for the hills. The Italian countryside is Beautiful. There's bright green rolling hills and all of these old buildings. The architecture is practically falling apart, but it, it definitely delivers the sense of we built this a long time ago and we're still standing and we're still beautiful. Their style and their quality has lasted all of these years and it continues to run through the vehicles that they make. are narrow, there's no shoulders, there's drop-offs, they're tight, they're twisty, they're beautiful, and they take you to all of these picturesque places. There's something about driving in Italy that's different. It's, it's somewhat of a romantic, tour through your dreams. After a thrilling day of driving through the Italian countryside, and with a better understanding of Ferrari's rich history and the vision of its founder, we can officially check Visit the Birthplace of Ferrari off our list. Coming up next, we find out size does matter, and in Rome, the smaller the better. There's a saying that all roads lead to Rome, which is exactly where we are today. Rome was one of the largest empires in the world, and its art and architecture continues to draw millions of visitors every year. Today, although still beautiful, it is a highly congested city with narrow and chaotic streets and a flow of traffic that aligns with the personality of its people. We have the perfect Italian car for the quintessential Italian city. There's a lot to see, and we've only got one day behind the wheel to do it. So come along with us as we tame these ancient city streets.
beautiful Rome. Beautiful, wet, rainy Rome. Yeah. Driving in a strange city on the other side of the world is a trial by fire, a fast and intense lesson in the personality and rhythm of a city. Uh, are you paying attention? No, I'm, I'm not. Where are we supposed to go? I have no idea. Uh, Rome was one of the greatest empires in the entire world, and it is still great, but now it is highly congested and it is filled with motor vehicles. The new Fiat Abarth is a sleek and modern update to the classic Fiat 500s of the 1960s. Its 1.4 liter turbocharged engine, five speed manual transmission, not to mention its tiny size, make this the ideal car to drive in a city known worldwide for its chaotic traffic. <laughs> These roads are really great. They are. Okay, now which way to the Coliseum? I don't know, let's check them out. Luckily, we can just keep circling until I figure this out. <laughs> Which one of these piazzas are we? Okay. Coming up, Patrick and I get more tickets in one day than we've both had in our entire lives combined. When we were picking up the cars, the guy goes, you're going to be driving? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be driving. He's like, you're crazy. Rome's reputation as an undrivable city stems from the huge crowds it endures during the summer tourist crush. But even in the off-season, it didn't take us long to find some of Rome's <laughs> notorious chaos. <laughs> this is already ridiculous. You know where we're going. This is already ridiculous. I would say this is organized chaos. You're contending with pedestrians, thousands of scooters, uh, thousands of cars, uh, foreign languages, and the rain, and a map that makes no sense whatsoever. Traffic in Rome is tight and moves fast, and other drivers will definitely let you know if you are blocking the flow. No, he just said you. <laughs> hey, I got my first F you from an Italian. He even gave me the hand gesture. Cool. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I just ran over some people. No, we didn't. Disclaimer, we didn't kill anyone. <laughs> no traffic lights, no lines, just chaos. Can I go that way? I don't know if I can. You can do it. I have utter faith that you can just cut straight across. There you go. Yep, yep, yep. You got it. You got it. Sorry, not from here. Scoozy. Scoozy. Navigating Rome is tough with or without GPS. Street signs are incomprehensible. Traffic seems to flow any which way. And there are special zones called ZTLs where you can't drive on certain streets at certain times of day without buying a pass. It's all very confusing. Yeah, we do not want to get a traffic fine. It is uh, a massive penalty. But how do we know if we're like legit or not? Well, like I don't even know if this is a lane. I don't know either. I mean, this stuff is so old. What is that? It's just like ruins everywhere. Everything. Everything is ancient and historic. Look at that. What is it? What is that? Does it say on the map? Oh, that is beautiful. Look at it. We're going that way. Yeah. Getting lost in Rome is fun. Especially when you're not in a hurry. Oh my gosh, look at that. Holy sh... Wow. I wish we could drive in there. That's the thing, this stuff that we're looking at is thousands of years old. You can see all the pot marks in it, where all the marble was taken away. And so you can find pieces of the Colosseum all throughout Rome and other structures. They have the aqueducts all throughout Rome. I mean, they had indoor plumbing before it even was a thing. Anybody could even fathom that. And then, just like all great empires, they fell apart. And now today, we sit on the ruins, and we jam cars and people and scooters and trains. Nice little break in the weather since we've been getting rain off and on since we've been here. Yeah, we gotta take advantage of the sun while we can. Once the weather lifted and the rush hour traffic abated, we were able to take the Barth on open roads and really turn it loose. Let's use that turbo and get around these cars. 170 horsepower sport mode, get it! And it's Brembo brakes. Brembo brakes. <laughs> They park backwards. They just park in where the motorcycles go. <laughs> Sidewalk, crosswalk. At the corner, at on the, the corner. corner. But that's probably why it's best to have a micro car in Rome. Oh, absolutely. So you can fit anywhere. You can oh, yeah. park anywhere, you can drive anywhere. While not really a true micro car, the Abarth is still skinny enough to fit down some of Rome's famously narrow cobblestone alleyways. Do 
deep down inside every Italian, they believe that they have they the right. They away. have the right away. Whether I you're driving, this. walking, bicycles, I... farmers market. I love the driving style here because everybody thinks that they have the right away. That's exactly how I drive. <laughs> It is interesting, too, that with as much congestion as there is, the people aren't uh, frustrated. They're not yelling, They're not yelling at each horns. other, right. No, like a honk of the horn is like, hey, buddy, time to go. Not, get out of my way. The city center, with all of its marvelous history and architecture, is surprisingly small and very manageable in a miniature car like the Abarth. Even in just one afternoon, without leaving your car, you can see things you'll never forget. And once you learn the flow, Driving in Rome is actually relaxed and enjoyable. Every city has a unique driving style, and this one is like water, where everything flows, fill in the gaps, not really any stopping, just keep in motion. I like it. Normally I'd feel bad about parking on the curb, but when in Rome. After an amazing day of driving on these ancient cobblestone streets, it's pretty clear that driving in Rome is not for the faint of heart. We made it through the entire day completely unscathed, which means I think we can officially check drive a car in Rome off our list. Now it's time to go get lost on foot. We'll see you guys next time. Our time in Italy was such a great experience. It was well worth the traffic violations, which did show up in the mail a few weeks later. Now, normally we wouldn't recommend driving in a city that congested, but this being a car show, we had to check it off the list. The spirit of the country and its people is reflected in the cars, and they've got some great ones. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the list.